Sorry. And welcome back, everybody. This is Ghost Story Stone from the South. I am your co-host, Lexi. And I'm your host, Stephen Booth, welcoming you for some scary November stories. My Aww. babies and girlies and bullies, how is you doing? <laughs> we hope that you guys had a fantastic Halloween. Hope it was great. Hope you didn't get uh, too much extra weight on there. I know I sure did. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. We, but it uh, was fun. That whole weekend was fun, man, because Saturday night we got the fog machine out and the crisp, the Christmas lights, the... Halloween lights, because I got them uh, spotlight things that you put on your house and the ghosts fly around. We had that going, the fog machine going, playing oh, some spooky music, time. carving pumpkins, and she'll put that on Facebook. I don't think she has put our pumpkins on there and all that. No, I'm going to put it all together. <laughs> we actually just did a, like, a thank you, everybody uh, Oh yes. video, and we're going to put that on Facebook, put about... Um, some stuff so yes we do want to say that for october you guys rocked you gave us 350 downloads man that's freaking awesome thank yeah. you man thank you so and y'all keep hitting them like buttons and uh, downloads <laughs> and keep subscribing and keep following man we're growing and we love it guys we're we're shocked we didn't think you know <laughs> i mean our numbers have been getting better every month yeah we get more little more. by little and uh, but this went we jumped from like what one averaging about one thirty to one fifty a month to three fifty. Yeah, that's crazy, we guys. Jumped, and we're so thankful and thank you to everybody who keeps sending messages and liking our stuff and listening. You yay, guys are yay. awesome. Well, let's get started and we can give you guys some exciting news after we get done. All right. Okay, I'm going to go first, and I do want to start off saying that I don't really highlight my notes um, today that I have time, so if I'm all over the place, it's because my hi my notes are not highlighted, and they have to be highlighted. Yeah, I don't know why so. she can't read. My niece is the same way when we do our podcast. Yeah, I did the same thing at school, so. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Write your so time down. I, I'm sorry. Here. I didn't know. I didn't see that in your hand. Excuse me, MacGyver. Don't ever talk to me. Anyway. So, this is about the uh, kind of urban legend thingy of the Red Lady of Huntington College. Where is Huntington? In Alabama. Ew. Um, so, sup supposedly, there is a spirit of a little girl named Martha who committed suicide on campus. <laughs> um, she was in love with the color red. Her, she always wore it. She decorated her room in it. Her bed was like red. Her walls were red. Everything in her room was red. Wow. Just everything. Look, and look what's in front of us. Oh, red. <laughs> yeah, our microphone stands, our mic, the uh, I look mic at the, covers, everything's red, red, red. And I'm like, oh, God. I looked at the screen. And it's weird because my favorite color is red. Yeah. Mine's blue. but so uh, It goes red and then burn orange. But that's a different subject in a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Football talk with me, by the way. <laughs> Look for it. It's on Spotify. <laughs> anyways, back to the story. Yeah, anyways. Um, so she didn't um, have a lot of friends. Everyone thought she was a freak. She was this freak who loved red. That's what everyone thought. Well, she finally made oh, friends. Not to pause you, but this is no lie. In the 80s, I grew up here in Mineral Wells, you know. There was no lie, a woman in red. You know where um, the chicken E is, that road right there? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you know they got that Jesse's Cafe or whatever it is? Yeah. Well, like two or three houses down, there was a woman. She always wore red. And you know that clothing store that just closed in the mall right there by Bell's, that mm -hmm. big one, mm -hmm. like a couple years ago? Well, that used to be like a grocery store back in the day. But she always wore red, and she had a little buggy or something. She pushed or pulled and would go down there grocery shopping and take her stuff back. Always walked, and she always wore red. Oh, wow. But she was a little old lady, and she always wore red. Always. Maybe she's part of the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, that is kind of crazy. So going back to my story, um, she didn't have a lot of friends, and she finally made this one, but she had a, the girl that she made friends with ended up moving away. So, what a cracker. She got very upset and just felt betrayed and angry and stuff after she left. Um, well, a couple 
like, I guess, weeks or something later, people noticing that she wasn't coming around and that she didn't attend classes. So somebody went up to her room to check on her. And she was on her bed in a red robe, and she was drenched in blood. Wow. Yeah. Um. So basically, she had committed suicide. Wow. Well, that sucks. But they see her ghost... Um, and she, it's like a red light glow. Um, and it's like from the room on the day of her anniversary. But no one knows really when she died. That's true. So, That's nuts. Um, I, at first it said like 1910, then it said the 20th century. So I'm not really sure when it did happen. But um, it was kind of like a place in an urban legend thing. So, I mean, if you do live in Alabama and you have been here... Make sure to send us a holler and like tell us if this is real or not, or if you've seen it. So, I do get some. Uh, we do have some kinfolk in Alabama. That's where the booths are from. Yeah, you. Alabama up in here. Sweet home, Alabama. <laughs> All right, you ready, Daddy? Yeah. Excuse me. I'm doing a lot of stuff. Give me one minute, please, guys. <sighs> one minute. Oh, please, guys. I sure am liking it's cooler weather. Me too. All right, little ladies and little 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 men and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the ch the Chow Chow the ch Chatwa 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 monster in Louisiana. In Louisiana, there is a legend of the uh, Chatwa man. The legend goes, a circus train was coming through town and derailed in Chattawa. They saw there was a creature that was on the train that uh, survived half man, half beast, and the creature roamed, supposedly, he broke out, you know, when the train crashed, and he uh, broke out and he wanders in nearby woods. Okay. Waiting for his next victim, and he's been banned. Yeah. It's crazy. That whole woods is like that pictures of him and like pictures of him and stuff it's kind of i don't know it's kind of how they describe him and stuff it kind of reminds you of a bigfoot maybe kind of you know what i mean maybe it's like their version of a bigfoot yeah you know but that's pretty weird i mean i'd see uh, around here in Minor Wells, there's not too many urban legends like that about our woods no the only one that there is it's about that lion's park yeah. Where it's like a satanic cult meetup thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've heard that since I was a kid. But other than that, that's all we have. I wish we had something like this guy. I know. We have a famous hotel, though. Yeah. They say uh, he's like seven foot, kind of hairy, and of course he's, you know, kind of gray. All right. You know. He's a gray man. I know. And see, that's what's weird if you sit there and listen to this story. And then you listen to the gray man story, and then you listen to all the other kind of Bigfoot stuff. It, it, it I know, it's kind of like diff, like in different. Like it's the same thing with the Wendigo. How it was all the same but different. <laughs> yeah, and like different um, parts of the United States, it's different. Even in Texas, I mean, different part. I mean, it's different. You know, the Bigfoot or Sasquatch. It's all kind of different. You know. Yeah. Like the boogie quick, the boggy quick. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? The boggy, like the boggy creek monster, the or boggy creek monster. Yeah, it's it's basically the Bigfoot. It roams around Oklahoma, but it's called the boggy creek. That's what <laughs> I, I have can't to, say. That's creek. what I have to look forward to in Oklahoma if I ever move there. Well, yeah, and then you probably, and then was well, sometimes when you go to Oklahoma, certain parts you cross the uh, that creek. Uh, I'm good. There's even a movie made about it. I remember watching it when I was a kid. There's a guy in the bathroom on a crapper and a freaking Bigfoot hand rawr, comes to the yeah while he's on the crapper. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> well, at first, you'd probably crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but like I... Ooh, man, I'd be running with my pants down just leaving a trail. Woo, you ain't getting me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I'll do one more. Oh, I can go. Because that one was kind of short. I got a short one. Let me go. Fine. Get on out of here. Okay. So... I'm going to do another shorty, and it's kind of on the same thing about, like, um, places and urban legends. So, this is the Golden North Hotel in Alaska. <coughs> north to Alaska, go north to Russia's home. 
Um, they say that this place is haunted by two different entities. Um, one of them is Mary. She stayed in this hotel while on the way for the return of her fiancé, who was on a gold uh, prospecting edition. Ew. Expedition. To get the gold in them damn hills. <laughs> but unfortunately, Mary caught pneumonia and died in her room. Aww. So, but then, um, with the guests, they have found, um, Mary's apparition at night. At the end of the bed, staring, watching them sleep. They have felt choking. They have felt, like, unable to breathe and, like, sounds. And they've had, like, sensations. Wow, that's crazy. Um, the other one is found in the same room. And it manifests as, um, like, an orbit of light, like an orb. Yeah. But, like, it is a, it's, they said, like, an unexplained, so, like, they really don't know what it is, but, like. Yeah. So. And this is room 14 at the Grand North Hotel. Mm, so lovely. Room four. Let's go to room 14, everybody. Let's go see what's going on down there. What do you say, Mildred? <laughs> all right. Um, that's all on that one. I just, I have a few shorties, but I like them, so. Yeah, and that's what sucks a lot of these times when we go in digging for these stories. Some are just short. It's weird how some of them are just short, and that's all it is to the story. And then yeah. there's some of them that there's a lot to it. And, and you can get like four pages. Yeah, and there's some, it's just like, well, I seen him over there by that tree, and that's it. And I thought it used to be a dairy farm. Yeah. I'm going to go over the Beast of Bolden Borough. The Beast of Bolden Borough. The legend begins that Bolden County is in the town of Clark, of Clark, <coughs> of oh, Bleh, Clarkton. Sorry. On December 29th, 1953, a local woman heard neighbors' dogs barking. When she went to check it out, she, was, uh, she saw a cat-like creature run into the woods. That was the first sighting. Two days later, the creature was seen again. Slam, blowing wide. Again, I seen that goddamn creature again. Oh, wow. You see that some bitch over there? <laughs> he bit my kitty cat's head off. Oh, I'm sorry. That's kind of rude. <laughs> 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 I'm still in the Halloween spirit. <laughs> okay, and then what did I? Where was I at? Two days or anyways? Oh uh, yeah, two days later on New Year's Eve. The chief, the chief, the chief of police, Ray Force, was called to a farm off the uh, Woody, off of uh, Woody Storm. To, uh, oh, that's the guy's name. To the farm of Woody Storms. Okay, so he got called out to the farm of Woody Storms, who is a man. Right. Two of Storms' dogs were killed by something large and powerful. The dogs were drained of their blood. Oh, like a Wendigo does. Yeah. The chief was getting calls and reports of the creature all over the county. On January 1st, two more dogs' bodies were discovered. Their blood was drained. The chief called in for help. He called in some uh, professional hunters, and they could not find anything. Everything finally went back to normal, and the beast was not seen since. That's weird. Yeah, it's like he was just passing through. And he was like, I want to eat everything. Yeah. I want to eat y'all's dogs. Oh, you know what? And this is the year for the Jeepers Creepers to come up and eat. Wow. As if 2020 can't get any worse. Yeah. Remember that, guys. Oh, and a full moon's come. The harvest moon tonight. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. Yes, because it only comes every 20 years, the harvest moon. And that's what makes him. Oh, God. Hey. We're not and, staying out too late, and, and if we 20, do, we stay in the backyard. Because <laughs> I don't want him swooping down and getting us like they, you know, in Freaking, the movies. Well, and what's how 2020 is going? Anything is possible, right? There. Oh God! What would you do real. if he's out there trick or treating, walking the streets, and you heard the, you heard something, and huh? And then you get taken. Yeah, Jeez. but that's weird. It just like started happening and killing the dogs, then all of a sudden it just stopped. Wow, that's messed up. Why is it always yeah. animals? I know. Well, okay, guys, I'm going to do um, two real two, quick. Two, 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 two. So this is a little story <coughs> about um, a man named Jed. <laughs> Robert. Say it again. 
<laughs> Robert, 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 Robert Schmail. Well, you a smell. Schmail. And this is in Colorado. All right. So this guy used to just, I guess, be a very bad guy. And he was tried and hung in Georgetown after he had gone in a um, killing spree. Well, that didn't mean you had to hang him. No. <laughs> the townspeople, um, they were filled with like, so much rage and just I'm angry and everything. So um, they let his body hang there for um, a couple days. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird after a while. I mean, I'd be mad at somebody, but I don't know if I'd want to see a dead body all the time. Yeah. Well, now, supposedly, he haunts the town looking for revenge. Well, um, I'd be kind of hacked off, too. I mean, yeah, he did wrong, but you didn't have to let his body sit there. Yeah, and literally let, watch everybody. Watch I mean, exactly, too. What are you going to do? I mean, what does that show visitors that, I better not screw up here. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, and people say that he looks really thin, and he flutters in the distance. Wow. So, yeah, there's not really that much on that one, but I'm going to do another one. So, Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. this will not be a short episode today, guys. It's like we said, when we start researching and stuff, we don't know how long these stories are sometimes. And well, sometimes like I we said, can I hit have some more good... than this. I have a lot more. Yeah, but we still got another episode to cut after this one, too, senor. Shush. Okay. Yeah, La Lula Lua. You're so, the ghost of La Lula Lua. Don't talk to me. All right, so uh, I'm going to do Lum's Pond in Delaware. Um, in the 1870s, I'm in Delaware. a young girl ran away from home and hid in the woods um, near Lums Pond in New Castle County. Um, and that's where her body was found. Damn. And they found it um, murdered. Like, she, that's how she died. She was murdered. But the killer was never apprehended. And the girl has seen, um, has said to like cover the bridge in the pond like haunt the bridge in the pond you can hear shrieks and temperature drops and noises and cries and stuff well i mean if you think about it i really understand why she's yeah. doing that <laughs> so all right dad it's your turn oh it's all mine it's all mine well i'm going to be talking about the brown mountain lights of north carolina the Brown Mountain is a low ridge in Burke County where a nice uh, where on a nice crisp evening you can see glowing orbs. So kind of like the weather we've been having basically. Yeah. The orbs have been seen for centuries <coughs> in multi legends or stories about them. The Cherokee believe it's the souls of the women looking for the men who lost their lives in the great battle of the great battle that took place there. I guess there was two big Indian tribes that went to battle. Hmm. Maybe. Another um, another story is it's lights of a it's lights of a search party looking for a woman that went missing. No one really knows what the lights are. No one's really got it figured out, you know, because there's some theories, you know, they're like, oh, let's say the, it's the, uh, they say some kind of gas or something. And they're like, well, that really can't be it because it's not a swamp or anything. So why would it be releasing gas? And They just can't be explained. But I kind of like, I mean, like the one about the warriors, the old uh, Indian women looking, for the w women looking for their husband. Mm -hmm. That one makes sense. And the one, the uh, it's uh, the lights of a search party looking for um, a woman that went missing. Yeah. That makes sense, too. Yes, it does. I mean, it don't always have to be scientific. It ain't got to be, well, that's because the tree's releasing this and making this happen. Sometimes there's just it's okay sometimes not to have an explanation. Yeah, sometimes there's just stuff out there you can't explain, guys. And, I mean... Just, just, just part of life. I mean, there's stuff out there we're never, never going to know the answer to at all. So, yeah, it is what it is. All right. Well, with that said, I'm going to move on to my story. This is going to be the Wardsaw Hall. Say that three times fast. Wardsaw Hall. Wardsaw Hall. Wardsaw Hall. 
I can't. <laughs> this is the Ordsdall Saul. <laughs> Ord Saul Hall in uh, the UK. I forgot to like write down like what specific city, but it's in the UK somewhere. Um, UK, UK. This is supposedly the 15th most haunted building in the Northwest over there. And this place is over 750 years old. Jesus, tamales. Yeah. It has been featured on TV's most haunted um, TV show in huh. So I've probably seen it and not thought of, not even recognized, not, not even recognized. Yeah. It. Um, this place offers its own, like they have their own ghost cam and they do oh, ghost really? walks with the medium. That's awesome. You know how cool it would be to go to UK and go do this stuff? Yes. Just think, maybe one day when we hit that Texas lotto, baby. Oh, uh, I know. Oh, Lordy. That's so, my dream. There's this one <laughs> um, place. It's called Star Chamber. It's the most active place there. There's voices of small children. There's cold spots. Uh, sh you get shivers, cold drafts, um, large freezing hands. You can, like, they touch on shoulders. Um, one time an oppressive appearance appeared suddenly in someone's room. And it was just making the guests and the visitor, like, emotionally in, uh, into intimidated <coughs> and scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> um, and then a one of the ghosts are a former worker. Not a former worker. What am I saying? One of the ghosts is former lord of Ajajashil Hall. <laughs> and then one of them is young woman. Um, a young woman named Cecily, Cecily, not Cecily, um, and the white lady, mm -hmm. lady no. of white. Another lady in white. I always see her. So, um, John Randolph, um, this is how it began. Uh, John Randolph, uh, inherited the hall from his family in 1536. Um... He is someone that grabs visitors and shoves them out of his way, and he makes himself known, and he's just, he's an ass, basically, towards everybody. He's mean. Yeah. Um, Silly's, um, Silly's presence includes smelling roses. Um, they say that it represents her past, I guess, one morning she got, or the morning of her wedding she got Something happened, I guess the broom left her or something, and... You know, it always happens like that. I know. I mean, they, they... Either their husband dies, or he runs off and don't come marry him, or... It's something. I always. know. Always. So, after she, you know, after that happened, she threw herself from the main staircase hall, and she died. Wow. Yeah. Um, The white lady... She's also called Lady Margaret. Oh, Margaret. She's basically this heartbroken, crazy lady. So she threw herself from the balcony in 1599. So oh, she's my been God. She's it for a while after the death of her brother. So her brother died, and she got really sad. She is seen as a woman in white or as a candle floating around. A candle? Yeah, I don't know what I'd do if I saw a candle floating. <laughs> yeah, that would... Uh... I would definitely be cashing out. I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm done. Yeah. See you later, guys. Can't handle this anymore. Um, I found this out. The original hall, like the, because it's called, you know, the something hall. The place was actually originally built in 1251. Jeez. So it's. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah it's pretty big. Pretty big time. Um, there are unexplained um, thumps and bangs, footsteps, doors open and closed. You hear children. You see children. Um, guests have been pushed and shoved. The whispers in ear, and they feel like get like blown in their face. Like, uh. wow. So, and then apparently the attic is haunted by two servant men that died. So, <laughs> like that's happening in the attic. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay, do you got any more, or do you want me to go again? No, I got one more, and then you can do one more. All right. This one's a little bitty one, too. This is the Devil's Tramp Tromping Grounds, I North was, Carolina. I was going to say tramping grounds. I was like, Dad. Yeah, tramping. 
Um, in the uh, in its forty foot diameter, nothing will go right. It uh, it all grow it all grow all the trees grow in a circle. If you uh, leave something in the circle, it would disappear overnight. Like if you set it there, leave it, and walk away, come back, it's gone. Yeah. And uh, some campers have stayed the night and in the circle. And they say, and they say they feel uneasy and really scared, like something is watching them, and they don't get any sleep. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, you just feel like you're in the circle, sleeping, and they say it feels like there's people around that circle out, for, you know, for out on the outside looking inside at you, and they just they don't get any sleep. They feel uneasy. <laughs> you know, Mm-mm. there's been sightings and stuff. I mean, it's just weird because it's it's a area and it's just a circle. It's an open area. The trees are just growing in a circle right there, and that's the only open place. And it's a pretty kind of thick wooded area. Yeah. But it's just it's crazy. Yeah, that is. I don't know what I do. I just yeah. <laughs> what? I'd be like, eh, I don't know if I can stay here tonight. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do. This is an infirmary in the UK. I actually have the location, but I don't know how to say it, so we're just we're not gonna say it. We're not gonna say it. <laughs> um, this is the Cardiff, Card Cardiff Royal Inform- Infirmary. Um, this place, this place dates back to um, 1822. Mm, it's so, been there a while. Yeah, 